urban combat is one of the most dangerous evolutions a military can undertake. Narrow streets, high-rise buildings, tunnels, bunkers, and basements, all sporting an enemy combatant, weapon, or ambush to make the attacking force think twice about every move. The Gaza Strip is no different and is even more dangerous considering the huge underground tunnel system colloquially called the Gaza Metro. So what would a ground invasion look like in today's conflict in Gaza? Thankfully for the IDF, they're sporting some fantastic technology that will give them a huge edge over Hamas and absolutely annihilate them. Arguably one of the best weapons Israel has in its arsenal in a ground invasion of Hamas is not even located near the enclave. Known as the Iron Dome, this air defense system has been getting a lot of coverage in the news lately and has a ton of misconceptions out there about it. But how can a weapon system that's located hundreds of miles away from the battlefield make such a huge impact? Iron Dome is the name of the Israeli air defense network meant to protect Israeli troops and civilians from mass rocket attacks. Started in the aftermath of the 2006 Lebanon War, where Hezbollah terrorists rained down tens of thousands of cheap, homemade rockets into Israel with near impunity. This concept took just five years to go from an idea on the drawing board to operational units in the field. The Iron Dome itself consists of 10 separate batteries that can each cover a 155 square kilometer territory. The batteries comprise air search radars, fire control radars, launcher units, and command and control hubs. When linked together, the Iron Dome presents a formidable weapon system that can provide Israeli skies exceptional protection against Hamas attacks. However, the Iron Dome is not perfect. While the system has over a 90% success rate in shooting down missiles it deems as a threat, it's not meant for missiles that are very fast or change direction. Instead, the system is designed for the thousands of older or homemade rockets fielded by Hamas. Because the system prioritizes quantity over quality, the designers of the system didn't intend for it to shoot down advanced missiles from modern militaries, hence why it has not been fielded in Ukraine. But how and why does the Iron Dome matter for Gaza? Because Hamas still has tens of thousands of rockets in its arsenal. When the ground invasion comes, they'll surely continue launching rockets until they're destroyed. With the Iron Dome protecting rear areas and civilian population centers, one of the main weapon systems of Hamas is negated since Israeli soldiers can get rest when not fighting and not worry about their families back home. And if you thought that system was amazing, Israel also has a version of Iron Dome for its vehicles too. One of the most significant advantages Israeli troops will have when storming Gaza will be their monopoly on armored vehicles. And Israel has some of the best in the world. Their Merkava main battle tanks and Namer armored personnel carriers form the bulk of Israel's armored force. But while these weapon systems are fearsome in their own right, their armor holds a secret to their battlefield prowess, and that system is called the Trophy Active Protection System. In the aftermath of the 2006 war with Hezbollah, Israel suffered the complete destruction of 20 of their best tanks. These losses were incurred against a non-conventional terrorist force using anti-tank guided missiles and improvised explosive devices. Israel realized that if it faced a foe equipped with its own armor capability, their tanks would be vulnerable due to a lack of effective armor. Because of this, the IDF went about creating a truly revolutionary system. In a matter of a few short years, IMI created the world's first active protection system. This means that a series of radars are constantly scanning for incoming threats to the vehicle, such as missiles and rockets. This data is then fed into a fire control computer that computes the risk to the armored vehicle. If the risk is high, the system will shoot a missile at the incoming threat to blow it up before it hits the intended target. For the trophy system, the engineer is enabled to have 360-degree coverage and that allows it to counter top-down attack weapons along with all types of missiles and rocket-propelled grenades. The algorithm also computes the risk to nearby friendly units and will not fire if there is a chance greater than 1% of hurting friendly Israeli soldiers. For example, if the incoming threat could only be intercepted near a squad of Israeli troops, the system wouldn't fire as to prevent fratricide. Trophy has had a fantastic combat history and is one of the best systems Israel will use to protect its troops during the street fighting in Gaza. 
This is because during their 2014 war in Gaza, Trophy performed dozens of successful interceptions of Hamas missiles and rockets fired at its tanks with no single tank damaged. The system is so good, it also tells Israeli troops where the fire came from and enables them to take out terrorist anti-tank teams with ease. The huge confidence boost provided troops with a feeling of invincibility that allowed them to continue attacking no matter what. But Israeli tankers aren't the only people with a system allowing them to attack Hamas no matter what they throw at them. Israeli infantrymen have a secret weapon that will enable them to easily bypass enemy strongpoints. When Israeli troops enter the crowded streets of Gaza, Hamas will have inevitably set up pre-planned kill areas throughout the city. If Israeli troops simply walk down the street, they would surely be met by murderous fire and ambushes from every angle. Thankfully for them, one piece of gear allows them to bypass these kill zones and attack from places Hamas never expected them to. Known as the Matador, which is short for anti-tank, anti-door, this disposable rocket launcher will be a key piece of equipment carried by Israeli infantry squads. Weighing just over 20 pounds, this versatile rocket launcher can fire three different warheads. However, the one that will be the most useful in the tight confines of Gaza will be the Matador armed with the wall-breaching munition. With a minimum effective range of 14 meters and a maximum effective range of 400 meters, IDF troops can blow holes into buildings without fear of collapsing them on top of themselves. Additionally, because of how the launcher is designed, there's almost no backblast, which means that even in the most cramped of spaces, IDF soldiers can fire these weapons without fear of injury to themselves or others around them. Because Israeli troops can knock holes in buildings with this munition, troops on the ground can easily bypass Hamas positions so they can't see them. But the army is not the only Israeli service branch looking to avoid detection. The Israeli Navy is getting in on it too. LORA is short for Long Range Artillery, and though the name doesn't do it justice, it's actually one of the Israeli Navy's secret weapons against Hamas. The LORA is a medium-range ballistic missile that, though it doesn't pack too much of a punch, its versatility and conspicuousness really make it a force to be reckoned with. While the LORA has a range of about 250 miles and about 300 pounds of explosives, it's incredibly fast. Moving at hypersonic speeds, this missile would be hard to shoot down even for modern militaries, much less Hamas militia forces. However, what really makes it special is its guidance system and how it's employed. LORA is a completely standalone system. This means that all the fire control, targeting, communications, and firing units are their own independent system. Because of this, the Israeli army can deploy them from the back of freight trucks, while the Navy can drop them on any civilian vessel with zero modifications, which is exactly what they've done before. The Israeli Navy has conducted several tests where LORA containers were placed on the decks of civilian craft with no additional modifications. The firing tests were wildly successful. Because of this, Israel can commission civilian ships and fill them full of LORA missile units. Because Israeli Navy vessels are easily distinguished, Hamas fighters will surely hide when they're around. But when they leave, that's when they'll come out. And that's when potentially any Israeli fishing boat or merchant can become a weapon to rain down destruction on Hamas before they even know what hit them. And though there haven't been any reports of this so far untested tech, one experimental system has been pressed into service because of the war and is performing better than anyone could have dreamed. Over the past 10 years, Israel has committed itself to become a world leader in artificial intelligence, and they have already made great strides in doing so. From automated machine guns to self-driving patrol vehicles, the Israeli army has been steadfast in trying to use AI to become a force multiplier. But the army has not been the only branch to do so. The Israeli Air Force has been working on a project for several years to make the world's first AI reconnaissance plane. Starting in 2020, the plane was supposed to reach operational capability later this year, but the war forced it into action early. And before you ask, no, the plane doesn't fly itself. However, the super-secret spy plane is equipped with a huge array of signals visual and radar intelligence collecting sensors. These sensors that collect massive amounts of information is fed into AI-powered algorithms and predict where Hamas fighters are and where they might be in the future. The AI collection system is so powerful that it allows direct communication with Israeli air and ground units. 
In conjunction with higher headquarters, the Oron is a critical link to get time-critical information to the warfighter faster than ever before. Because of this AI-powered eye in the sky, Hamas fighters can't hide anywhere since the Oron has the capability to process and find thousands of potential targets in seconds. Bye for now.